Uh, we want to talk about Muslim extremism. This is a, a growing problem. Uh, and uh, in particular, we want to talk about this group, the uh, Muslims Against Crusades. Uh, I mean, how do these groups prosper? We know that uh, way back when that uh, hate preacher Adnan Chowdhury was connected to them. We know that they were stirring their hate after the uh, Twin Towers uh, disaster catastrophe. Uh, but here they still are, you know, maybe were, were labouring under a different name or whatever. Theresa May banned them. Uh, they're a prescribed organisation, but here they are making Mike Freer's life hell and still uh, doing what they do. How do why, why haven't we managed to stop them and why can't we stop more of these extremists behaving in the way that they do? Well, it's interesting what you say, of course, Kevin, because, as you say, they, they are a um, prescribed group. So it's not as if they're performing these activities in the open, in the street. People who might be affiliated to this group um, are obviously using anonymous methods to target and make threats. It's a little more difficult to find that, obviously, given the anonymity of the Internet. And the other problem you're seeing is that people do jump between groups. So one group becomes banned. I mean, back in the 2000s, we had al Mahajarun that got banned. We had Muslims Against Crusades that got banned. We've now had Hizbut Tahrir banned. And yet, I guarantee you, tomorrow, there'll be another organisation that starts up that will soon need to be banned. The problem is that, as you stated at the start, the issue of Islamist extremism is not going away. In fact, it's getting worse year on year. There's nobody who thinks it, uh, it was a problem 10 years ago, but it isn't a problem now. On the contrary, anyone in the know realises we are seeing larger amounts of this form of extremism and with ever more devastating consequences. Yeah, well, let me put it to you, Alan, because I think I've solved the riddle of all of this. I must be a genius, because <laughs> cast your mind back 30, 40, 50 years ago, we didn't really have much Muslim extremism. Today, as you said, growing exponentially. All these various inflection points, 7-7, Manchester Arena, the list goes on and on, and yet nothing's been done about it, or no, nothing has actually seemed to work. I would suggest there's a direct correlation with the migration figures, and we are importing a lot of hate and intolerance. Well, that's certainly been the case historically. There's no doubt about it, as you've just pointed out. This wasn't an issue 50 years ago. However, the problem here is not one of necessarily migration. As always, Alex, it's one of integration. It's about being able to integrate people from different backgrounds into this country, something we've done terribly badly over the last 20 years. There was a conscious policy, let's not forget, under uh, the Labour government of the 2000s to, uh, to sort of celebrate multiculturalism rather than trying to you know, get everyone to mix together into, into sort of one dominant British culture. And we're paying the consequences for that. But I have to say, it's not simply, obviously, the uh, Labour government of the 2000s, but the Conservative government since that also haven't got to grips with the problem. And you will know, Alex, there have been tons of reports. A report in 2016 by Dame Louise Case, Baroness Casey now. There was a report by Sarah Khan, a report by William Shawcross. Constant report saying, this is a problem, this is what government needs to do to get on top of it, and yet we're not seeing the action. I would love to see politicians, as a result of Mike Freer's decision, come out collectively, um, all major parties saying, you know what, it's gone too far, we are going to act, and we don't need to even look at where we're acting. We've got all the reviews already that tell us what to do. Let's just implement the reviews. That would be step one of how to get on top of this problem. Uh, right, I'm going to step on a really, really dangerous territory here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to preface this by saying, of course, the vast, vast majority of Muslims are decent people contributing to society, and they're very, very welcome. However, uh, what I want to ask you about is, uh, shall we say, the culture of Islam. Uh, what is it about Muslimism that creates terrorism? I mean, you don't get Catholic terrorists, you don't get Methodist terrorists, you don't get Jewish terrorists, you don't get Buddhist terrorists. Why do we have to suffer so much with uh, Islamic terrorism? Well, now you're into a very theological debate, because, of course, you will know that there are very different uh, sects within Islam, very different branches of Islam, and many of whom will, you know, abhor terrorism, most of whom abhor terrorism, most of it of turn away from that, of course. Now, the problem is that Islam is a textual-based religion, and as such, it hasn't had a codification process whereby, if you like, a uniform version has come out that is accepted by, you know, almost all. And what you therefore have is that you can look at a verse 
in the Quran or look at a verse of the Hadith, the sayings of uh, the Muslim Prophet Muhammad, and you can interpret it either positively or negatively, depending on who you are. And there's no one essentially to tell you that you're right or wrong because there's no overall supreme authority. You mentioned, for example, the Catholics. Well, they have the Pope. The Pope you know, determines what the line is, if you like, with the church. If you look at another textual religion, Judaism, its sort of arguments were all codified in the Talmud. They've all been resolved. Yes, there are still disputes, but nobody goes, oh, an eye for an eye, I'm going to gouge an eye out, because it's been resolved. The problem is that there has not been that theological clearing occurring in Islam with the degree of certainty that other religions have ascertained. And as a result, you get bad people saying, oh, I, I, I think I, that verse means this, whereas good people say, no, don't be ridiculous, that verse means something completely different. So that is why, unfortunately, violence uh, remains a part of this because it's the interpretation by the individual, as opposed to religion itself, which is causing them to say, I want to be violent.